So I have, have two speakers here. Uh, I'm going to introduce Danielle Pellet, who's from Orbs, which is a really interesting multi-blockchain company. And Yadiv Altshuler, who is doing Indoor, which is doing analytics on encrypted data and blockchains. And they'll tell you about it. Sit down, guys. Um, so here's the framing that I want to think about, is what we're seeing is a transformation from the internet, which is a communication medium, to something that's an actual transactional medium where you can do business. There are legally enforceable contracts that, that happen because it confirms that the message was received, that it was accepted, it was logged in a way that is trustworthy. And then you can have smart contracts, which are still being developed, but the legal guys are on it, believe me, um, where you can actually begin executing, for instance, selling, buying, things like that. That's a transaction medium. And uh, at Connection Science at MIT, which is the thing that I run, we're you know, partnering with law schools around the world, we're partnering with the State of Israel, with uh, uh, the government of France, lots of people to actually build these transactional platforms. But, but that's just the beginning. The thing that's happening now is, is that some of the things that you know about AI and blockchain, well, we're going to the next generation. And we want to hear about those things. And then the charge I'm going to give you is to talk about, oh my god, I could do X, or that just changes the way I think about things in the Y way. And we're going to have a little report back at the end. OK? Deal? OK, so let's see. You're going to go first, or you're going to go? OK. There you go. Uh, OK, hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm uh, Yanni Valtruller, uh, the founder and CEO of Endor. And, um, Sure, you've all heard in the past uh, year that uh, data is the new king. Um, so yeah, it is, and companies spend tremendous amount of resources collecting data, curating high quality data sets. But in order to take this data and monetize, monetize it, in order to create real impact on businesses, um, this data must be analyzed so that um, actionable insights are distilled from it. Now, if you own an organization and you have this great data, um, in order to do this, you need someone who is a skilled machine learning expert, AI expert, data scientist, to um, analyze this data. Now, it doesn't matter if you use um, an academic researcher as your partner, or if you build um, an internal team of data scientists, or if you hire some third-party contractor. Whoever is going to do this for you must be given complete access to the raw data. Now this becomes increasingly unbearable in today's regulatory regime, specifically with the introduction of uh, the GDPR um, uh, regulation. Uh, giving access to the data uh, basically means that you lose control of the data. So once you spend all this energy getting this data, how can you monetize it? How can you have other people benefit from it while still maintaining the, the privacy of the data? So a little bit about my background, I uh, studied at the University of Computer Science, I took AI courses, I then um, did my PhD around AI, then spent three years at MIT working with uh, Sandy, developing the new generation of AI, some technology that uh, would enable data to be analyzed by people who didn't spend 20 years or more in the academia um, studying AI. And this research led to the development of uh, social physics. Social physics is a uh, mathematical modeling of human uh, behavior that allows for the first time to analyze data that is given in a completely encrypted form. So data owners can encrypt their data and then share it on the blockchain with um, data scientists. 
more data is being disclosed. So if, uh, if uh, someone uh, has um, high quality data, they can basically open it up to the public and uh, have it analyzed, creating insights for them or for um, other uh, third parties. It can be pro bono, it can be commercial, but what's important is that for the first time we can create an ecosystem where data providers can share their data without disclosing anything about their data and we expect this to really accelerate and facilitate the process of predictive analytics. So Ender is leading the revolution, this revolution. We are already working uh, with some of the world's um, leading uh, players in this field and um, we would like everyone to join us in uh, creating this ecosystem. Thank you. So just to sort of summarize, so in 2008 we had this big crash it was basically because there were a lot of dark trading pools where people were all doing the same sort of investments, but they didn't know it. And they couldn't share that information because it's a customer data, it's proprietary. But what you're talking about is they could have done a joint analysis of their data without revealing the data because they don't have to decrypt it at all. You give me some encrypted data, you give me some encrypted data, you ask questions about it, you ask questions, and you discover that you guys have too much in common and you upped up the systematic risk. Now you can act, but you don't know his data and you don't know his data. Ah, oh, pretty interesting. Okay, so, sorry for the translation. Kenya, you want to take that microphone there? That's what I do for a living. Right? So, oh, you made act, right? Okay, Kenya, tell us about the future. Um, hi, it's great to be here. My name is uh, Daniel, I'm the president of Forbes and Texas Group. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Right. Then you haven't got the microphone right Okay. Um, Orbs, we're developing a public blockchain infrastructure for large consumer application, enterprise, financial institutions. And Hexa is a consulting arm, uh, an investment arm, investing across the ecosystem. And the way we look at blockchain and uh, we understand blockchain is a little bit um, as the innovation that moves between computing platforms. If we think about the movement between mainframe to a PC to mobile operating system, um, it's very deceiving because initially um, they look lacking a lot of feature um, and they look much worse than what we're accustomed to. Um, but what is interesting is that they bring one new feature that enables developers to create new kind of applications. Um, so if you think about mobile phone, initially um, applications and didn't make a lot of sense when we thought about it, and Word and Excel, why would I want to do it on a very um, weak CPU with a very small screen when I can use my Excel on a PC? Um, but the mobile phone brought us two additional functionalities which created a new industries, uh, which is the GPS and the camera. So now developers can develop new kind of applications um, such as Instagram to share content instantly or Uber for transportation. And I think blockchain is doing um, the same progression in a sense that initially it's much worse, it's very slow, um, it's more expensive, it's lacking a lot of features, but it has one great advantage that we never had before, is that it has trust. So now uh, programmers um, can build new kind of applications that don't rely on a centralized entity. Um, and if you think about a couple of the examples, um, such as Bitcoin, it's the first time that we have digital scarcity, that we will be able to program money, for example. And now we can think about how this will impact law, that we can um, program smart contract, and we don't need uh, necessarily um, the, the lawyer or the judge in the middle um, to, to have the verdict, or a tokenization of a asset um, registries are completely decentralized. And this is what we focus on. We think the main innovation in blockchain is creating that decentralized infrastructure that doesn't require trust, that relies on math um, and the decentralization of the network. And today it's very mature. Um, you know, if you go to most businesses and you ask them, uh, what would you prefer? Um, speed, uh, confidentiality, and performance of centralized database compared to blockchain that is more robust, but slower and more expensive, most of them do rely on centralized applications. But we think as the development will advance, um, then a lot of these centralized will be able to open up and share uh, the wealth distribution 
in a much more fair manner. And this is what we are focused on at Orbs. So that's great. So let me translate for you too, okay? So, <laughs> so again, just before we came here, we were at this meeting where they're looking at securitization of data for the road and belt initiative. And they're looking at having millions or tens of millions of LPs financing large-scale physical infrastructure. It's a completely impossible management problem. But using some of these new techniques, these blockchain techniques, you can actually manage this very broad base of investors. And as we were just talking about the sort of stuff that he's doing, you can look for risk signals in there without revealing their data. That's pretty interesting. So now you can begin financing things, managing things, uh, where it's millions of stakeholders, but you're not actually sharing data. You're looking for commonalities across them using these, these fancy new AI techniques. And the charge to you, this is the cost of the, the lunch, okay, is, is talk at your table about how does this change things for you? Can you think of a way where this like really transforms you? What's, what's the thing that you think is like, God, that could be really exciting. And then at 1.30, we're going to have a little report back. Everybody just, just like 60 seconds, but from each table to see what people thought up. And that'll help you understand it. Like as I said, we'll produce a white paper out of that. Um, be branded MIT, so it will have the ring of truth. <laughs> yeah, okay. And you can put your name on it or not, Chatham House rules. Sir? J just one question, Sam. So, a homomorphic encryption was thought of as a technique that enabled you to have encrypted information and to be able to manipulate it. And it's proven to be useful for certain kinds of simple things. And for complex calculations, you can't work on the encrypted data. Is this homomorphic encryption or something? No, so homomorphic new? encryption so, so is a little more technical than probably most people. So homomorphic encryption is one way of handling some of these things that requires specialized encryption. It's also not ready for prime time and you can't do live databases and things like this. Uh, secure multi-party is another way to do it that's very expensive, but again has some real limitations in what you can do. This is interesting because this is a pattern recognition method that requires log of the amount of data. Now that's a sort of, what does that mean? Well, that means that you can find things with 1,000th of the data in a typical application. Same accuracy, 1,000th of the data, and it works on standard encryption. So you can take any old database and do it. So it's a radically different way of doing it. You shouldn't worry about that. Okay? Because what the real story is, is that these new ways of doing things transform our assumptions. You don't need to reveal data in order to do AI on it. You don't need to reveal data in order to share and be able to get insights. And you can handle millions of LPs, tens of millions of LPs, and all the contractual relationships, which just changes the way you can do funding and project on Okay? Talk about it, and we'll hear back from you in 1.30, okay?